So right now we're inside the lower level of one of the flankers of the building. There are two opposite angles uh, sticking out, uh, one corner on each end of the structure of Fort Dobbs. And the main purpose of the flankers was to allow for gunfire to leave loopholes cut in every direction and cover every avenue of, pro of approach by the enemy, as well as creating fields of intersecting fire from the loopholes on the main structure itself, hitting people at a 90 degree angle. On the ground level of one of the flankers of the fort, archaeologists discovered that the fort actually had an interior well, and I'm standing next to the site of that well here today. Part of the reason Fort Dobbs was placed on this hilltop was because of water. The hillside is in between the fork of two creeks, each about a quarter mile to the north and south of the structure, and at the time, in the 1750s, there were natural springs that the soldiers certainly used for water that were closer to the hilltop itself. But under uh, attack, without an outer fortification here, they had to have a guaranteed protected source of water, and so this 39-foot deep well was sunk right here inside the building. Now while the main structure of Fort Dobbs was three stories high, each of the corner flankers was two stories. That was really all they needed to afford a good view of the countryside and to allow for enfilade gunfire to cover all the walls from multiple levels. We believe on the second floor of both flankers, the fort mounted small swivel cannons, much like the one that's next to me here. Uh, we are unsure how many swivel guns were here when the fort was first built in 1756, but no, for certain that by the time the war with Cherokee begins in 1759, six additional swivel cannons are sent out here from Fort Johnston at the mouth of the Cape Fear River, another North Carolina provincial post. The swivel guns firing from this upper level would be able to discharge uh, a, either a half pound solid iron shot, uh, fairly accurate to a range of more than 200 yards, or if the enemy was close, getting up to the fort's ditch filled with an abatis of sharpened tree branches, uh, slowing that enemy force down, the swivel gun could turn into a giant shotgun, discharging grape shot, in this case a paper bag with 12 60 caliber lead musket balls contained inside. A swivel gun can be fired by just one soldier, it doesn't require a crew such as a larger artillery piece might, and defending this post against an enemy force lacking cannons themselves, uh, having even just swivel guns gives these men a major edge in the the defense of Fort Dobbs.